Then Tom and the by doing second channel. I'm funny longer too. <laughs> On a warm summer's day in Motherwell, Port Elizabeth, Sylvia Mdwai did not know that she was saying goodbye to her granddaughter for the very last time. On the afternoon of 12 April, Lelona Tembakazi Fufu left her home to hitchhike to Grahamstown for a graduation ceremony that evening. While hiking along the N2, she was picked up and taken on an alternative route towards the old Kucha Hotel, a route that would eventually lead to an isolated bushy area where her brutal and senseless murder took place. The last phone call will forever be remembered by the family. I send him that one more time. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, bye bye. Maybe she had someone to hitchhike with. That's how I think that was her reasoning. But she was so scared to hitchhike because she was always asking me, "Well, how how do you make it? Um, like how 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 is hitchhiking? How do you make it to hitchhike? Is it fine? Is not um like feeling like there's something is um there's something that's gonna happen? No, until no, it's just fine." <laughs> Nabazal Baki, Bam Sebenzel, Ukum Fundi Sapai, but all that was taken away from the need to move between places makes traveling a part of everyday life. While some use private cars or public transport, hitchhiking is a common means of travel for many in the Eastern Cape. Both young and old hitchhike for similar reasons and consider it as one of the most viable options. People are aware of the dangers of hitchhiking, whether it is done during the day or at night. But the cheapness and efficiency of hitching a ride makes it a favorable option. The hiker and the person picking them up both make subjective judgments about each other's character, but how can you really tell who is safe and who is not? It all depends on how, how scruffy the guy looks or whatever. You can follow your own instincts and say, well, let me give him a lift or whatever. So. Firstly, I don't hitchhike in a car that is driven by a white guy, by the whites. Even if it's a guy or a woman, I don't hitchhike. I'm afraid of people who are wearing these black glasses. 
as you can see, mine are for, 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 for ice. Yeah. So the one that the, the, the one for the sweka, I'm I afraid of people who's wearing the glasses for the sweka. I don't get in a car which is driven by a man with black or white. I don't get if it's by himself. No, I don't get it. For different reasons, not everyone is willing to pick up hitchhikers. My car is my car. And, okay. and um, what I've heard about hitchhikers, they can uh, hijack you, they can do harm to you and things like that. Yeah. It's not wise at all. Because, I mean, really, you can be hijacked and all that. You see? So, really, I don't like it. I do pick up people sometimes. Uh, what, why, why do you pick them up? Feel sorry for them, I suppose. While hitchhiking is not illegal, stopping for a hitchhiker on a highway can incur a fine of 1,000 Rand for the driver and 300 Rand for the hiker. Slightly less is paid on a normal road. Well, if a vehicle stops in a no hiking spot, it's um, 500 Rand fine because it's actually a, a no stopping zone. What we do is we prosecute the, the driver for stopping in a no-stopping zone. While the South African government struggles to deliver subsidized transport to all learners who walk five kilometers and more to get to school, learners do what they have to, to make it to school and back. Our transport comes like half six, but sometimes it, it comes late, so our like it, it really arrives the time that I have to be in class, like seven, and then I decide to not go to school and stay. Because if I went to school at seven, immediately at seven o'clock, my classroom will, will be locked, and the grade twelve will take me to the office. And then I'll sit there in the office and like do, do, do detention for being late at school. When they could pay, like my mom, is five hundred rand every month. Because there's two of us climbing the cross. Kids from the location, they choose to come to Fiji. Am I right? They choose to go to Fiji. In fact, in Grahamstown, we don't need um, transport subsidy because there are too many schools. I mean, the schools here in Grahamstown are in the location. They are close together, and Grahamstown is very small. You can walk, it's easy for you to walk from point A to point B. I chose Fiji to give a better education like other children. I really walk with other girls from Vichy. I can walk with them. But sometimes they just, if they see taxi, they just get it. My mom actually suffers a lot with money. And I don't really have the same brand that the girls do get. And I have to hike. I don't usually like asking, can I please have the same brand for the taxi? To just say, I don't have money. It's, I, I know that, and I won't just ask money to her that, can, you please, can I please have money? I want to get a taxi. I know that she will say I don't have money, and that's the truth she doesn't have. It's two months now that I'm hiking. Then I usually get scared because the, the driver that's driving the car is like always quiet, doesn't talk. And sometimes they smile, I don't know why. So I usually get scared when they're smiling. I get scared at the same time when they're quiet. So that's, and like when I get home, I usually my mom like asks, where have you been? Like really crampy and I have to like talk when I'm slow. And then like I have to cool down myself then just talk to her. If I cool down, she will cool down. But if I'm here like chicken stuff, then she will, she will always be crampy. And then that's how I get scared sometimes I think. My mom was gonna say about this and where have I been? Then she always used to ask, if you get raped, what did you do? Because I won't say nothing. Here at, v here at VG, we've got, a, we've got a code of conduct. And in that code of conduct, it is very clear that our kids are not allowed to each other due to safety reasons. Well, I think if I'm not mistaken, two years ago, we did try to apply for the transport. Uh, the transport thing, but now the problem with the, the government in the Eastern Cape, the uh, government of the Department of Education in the Eastern Cape, they still look at VG as a privileged school. So it was uh, very, very difficult for them to grant us 
such activity? The scholarship program in Grahamstown is, is running, but our particular focus uh, for now is uh, the farming, the farm schools, because they are the ones who are feeling the, the pinch, mostly compared to other rural schools. Uh, we've also approached Treasury and Department of Education to say we need to find a solution, a lasting solution on this matter, because we still have a lot of children in the province who are only, only transporting 54,474 and then there's a need for 120 kids to be transported. In the wake of Lelona's death, Rhodes University is now looking into finding solutions for cheaper student transport. A simple thing might be, well, Rhodes must provide all the transport. Well, you know, with respect, Rhodes is a university. Rhodes uh, is not in the business of running taxi services. All kinds of issues arise. You know, you can't just run a taxi service. There's safety issues. There's cost issues. All those kinds of things, you know, arise. So, but I think we all would uh, be happy to proceed from the basis that this was a tragic loss. It was a loss one too many. And we must put our heads together and really work out how might we avoid something like this. Until viable solutions are found, the culture of hitchhiking continues and raises questions about the delivery of affordable transportation in South Africa.